They don't believe in no fate. Uh, every day they get the gray. Uh, stepping up here with a snake. Uh, city of dreams, city of dreams. And welcome to this, the very first episode of Night City Wire, a brand new series from us at CD Projekt Red, where we'll be talking about all things Cyberpunk 2077. For today's episode, we'll be starting with a brand new trailer. One of our developers will be joining us to help unpack everything you're going to see. We'll have some news, an announcement about a secret collaboration. We'll be taking a look at some brain dance gameplay and welcoming back our developers just to have a chat about everything you're going to see. But there is one more thing. Media all over the world have been getting hands-on with Cyberpunk 2077, and when this episode finishes, you'll be able to go and check out exactly what they thought. So, let's get started. It is time to take a look at our brand new trailer, and after that, our lead quest designer, Pavel Sasko, will be joining us, because I've got a feeling you're gonna have a few questions after watching this. So, let's take a look. I love this town, the city of endless opportunity. Ready to get your cherry popped? Yeah, come on! City like any other, just bigger. Nah, no, mano, not just any other city. Legends are born here. The major leagues. We're only here because Dex is pulling the strings. Doubt that puts us in the same league as them. But we are. They just don't know it yet. But if you got the cojones and you know how to use them, you can do damn near anything. Unless you catch a bull. Even then, you go out with a bang, right? You know, you can make heaps more eddies as a motivational speaker. Yo, Mr. V, a pleasure. So what's the gig, Dex? You meant to come out in one piece? <laughs> <laughs> How about we go over the plan? There's this prototype tech, a biochip to be precise. Jobs to grab it. Guessing it belongs to a court. Mm-hmm. Arasaka. We are robbing some heavy hitters. Thought you could blackmail me, fucker! High risk, high reward. First rule of the afterlife. Cut team, baby. Goes without saying, we do this on the hush. Ideally, no bodies. Not a one. He's led, assholes! Is it gonna be dangerous? Don't you worry, me amor. We're bulletproof. Your ass is open now! What the fuck just happened in there? Can't stop digging night city. Fucking major leaks. Happy now, Jackie? Yep! I fucking hide! Time to fail! Oh my god, we're so fucked. Dex! What the fuck? Game risk it, V. And you. Who are you? So the trailer contains footage from the game's prologue only, but there was an awful lot in it. So Pavel, why don't you try and help us unpack everything that we just saw? Oh yeah, I mean, absolutely, I can try. So um, what you have just seen is only the prologue of the game. So that awesome stuff is only happening in the first few quests. What the trailer shows you is really our stage, the night city, you know, this gigantic city built of six completely unique districts surrounded by the seventh one that we call the Badlands. As a player, you are meeting Jackie. Jackie's your friend. Now, they together are trying to reach out for something that is very precious. They are trying to reach out for this chip of immortality, this gateway to eternal life. Jackie introduces you to Fixer Dexter Deshawn. He's a very important person in a social ladder of cyberpunk. He is able to provide the player with various jobs and contracts to be able to gather money, to be able to modify their bodies, push themselves to the limits to put their hands on the chip. But uh, as you can expect, not everything goes as planned, and, uh, but to, to see it, you have to play the game. There are an awful lot of really cool things in this trailer, and there's a few that I would just love to talk about a little bit more for the people at home. So let's start with talking about a gang called the Mox. Now, we see a few flashes of them in this trailer. I personally think they're really cool and one of my favorites, but can you give us a little bit more information about them? Oh yes, so uh, the Mox is one of the gangs that player is going to interact with throughout the game. The Mox is the gang that has been formed in 2076 after death of uh, Elizabeth Borden. She was called Lizzie. Now, she was an owner of a brothel and former sex worker, and she was 
protecting working guys and girls from harassment, from abuse, and the gang is really continuing her mission. And as a player, you are going to interact with that gang, meet multiple different NPCs, and craft your own relationship with them, and understand what they are all about. So earlier on, you did mention a seventh district, a place called the Badlands. Now, we saw a few shots of this in the trailer, but I'd love for you to give us a bit more detail about the district outside of the city walls. Okay, so the Badlands is this like dead, dried out space going around the whole night city. And as a player, you'll be able to traverse that space in your car or motorcycle. This is a space that is inhabited by the nomads. Nomads are living in a different families and they are traveling across that space in convoys made out of the cars and motorcycles. And as a player, you will be able to traverse and access different type of open world content that has been prepared specifically for you to that, get that awesome feel of the Badlands as an area. In the trailer, we also saw like a completely metal creature. Now, he didn't look like he was from the Maelstrom gang. This looked like something else. So please tell the people at home, who is this giant metal monster? <laughs> okay, so, so that big dude, that was Adam Smasher. He has been introduced in a pen and paper in Cyberpunk 2020 by our uh, senpai Mike Pondsmith. Adam Smasher is a fully converted cyborg. He is and who was always a loyalist of Arasaka. And uh, time has changed and in 2077 he had to find his own space in uh, Night City. But to uh, find out you'll have to play the game. In this trailer we do see some flashes of a Ripper Doc called Victor Vector. I think if people have watched our previous gameplays they might remember him. But I'd really like for you to give the people at home some more information about what Ripper Docs are and how they'll be interacting with them when they play Cyberpunk. So Reaper Dogs in our game, they are surgeons. They are like a specific type of a job in the social ladder of cyberpunk. Jim, they are accustomed you know, and relax. specialized in replacing limbs uh, to the metal ones. They can basically update your body, enhance your body, change you into this walking war machine. And uh, as a player, you are going to meet different kinds of Reaper Dogs in the, in the game, craft your own relationship with them. Some of them are like important characters for a, for a story. Through that, you will invest uh, eddies that you're gathering to turn your body into this tool that allows you to survive on the streets of Night City. Pavel, thank you so much for joining us. I know you'll be back later in the episode because you're going to be helping us to analyze the brain dance gameplay. But before that, we do have some news to share. Earlier in the year, we announced that if you pick up Cyberpunk 2077 on Xbox One, you'll be able to play it on Xbox Series X when the console launches. And just in case you missed it, it will be the same for PlayStation players as well. If you pick up Cyberpunk 2077 on PlayStation 4, you'll also be able to play it on PlayStation 5 when the console launches. And that's not all. There will be a free upgrade for Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, but we'll have more details on that soon. Tonight's city. Before we reveal our first look at the Brain Dance gameplay and welcome back our developers for a chat, there is just one more thing we want to announce. Something that we've been working on in secret for a while. We are very excited to announce our partnership with Studio Trigger and Netflix to bring you Cyberpunk Edgerunners, a standalone anime set in the Cyberpunk universe, which we've been working on for some time now. Edgerunners is due to launch in 2022, but for some more information, let's go to the team in Tokyo. My name is Saya Elder. I am the Japan-based producer for Cyberpunk Edge Runners. What I do basically on this project is that I am a fixer, to put it in the words of the Cyberpunk universe. We are a game company. We are a bunch of nerds, and wherever there are nerds, there's going to be anime fans. So it was always a dream for us to make anime. When we began this project, we were certain that we didn't want to make a recreation of the game. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is a standalone story set in the same universe. The stage is still Night City, but everything else is totally new. New characters, new story. I do like to think that it's going to be a great gateway for newcomers to come and check Cyberpunk game and also the Cyberpunk genre as a whole. 
Right now we're in Nakano, which is one of the biggest anime mechas of the world. Uh, I'm going to take you to Studio Trigger right now because we have the wonderful opportunity to talk to the dream team that will be bringing you this anime. Konnichiwa. え、トリガーの代表取締役の作れるというのが非常に楽しみです。え、トリガーも10年 Now it is time to show you some gameplay of Braindance. This is a feature that you'll experience when you play Cyberpunk 2077. Braindance is essentially a recording of somebody else's experience. It allows you to relive their sense of sight, smell, touch, and even hearing, all thanks to a special device. After the gameplay, I will be welcoming back Pavel Sasko. I will also be joined by Patrick Mills, our senior quest designer and all-round law master, who will be helping to answer your questions and give you some explanation on how you'll be interacting with Braindance when you play Cyberpunk 2077. So, let's take a look. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. And remember, everything on full blast. They'll spot us extra for a wicked adrenaline high. Okay, on you go. Down, everybody, on the ground. I want to see you kissing the flooring. Money, now, or I will fucking drop you, I swear to God. Well, yeah, hey, I'm, 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 now, before I blow your fucking head off! Ah! Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. That was too much. I felt, I could feel the guy's pain, his dress, his hope, hope wrapped up in something else. Mm-hmm. Probably took a booster just before. You'll be fine. Got everything set up? Let's switch over to editing mode. I'll sever the link to the BD Roller's sensory array. You'll be able to look around freely. All seems yours. Full cam control in analysis mode, so move around, zoom in and out, whatever else you come up with. Think of it as your own little sandbox. So, analysis mode, you control playback. Can even pause when you feel the need. Then you use the editor console to unpause. Try it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. You go in, snatch the cash, get out, and we sell the BD to those psycho freaks from the studio. Got it, got it. Dream as hell, right? Well, that's not all. You can speed things up or rewind, whatever you like. Give it a try. Rewind, roll it back to the top. Can I, can I? All good, neat. Now try fast forwarding a bit. Plan simple. Do nothing on the creative. Okay. You can also reset the recording. That'll take you right back to the beginning. Try it. Now for some fun. This here's why you came in the first place. In analysis mode, you get to view and even scan details of the enviro recorded by the BD roller. Focus on the heat. The gun this gonk gets from his buddy at the beginning. Now scan it. Plan simple. Do nothing odd. Don't get creative. 
You go in, snatch the cash, get out. And we said we need to go cycle free some jaguar. And remember, keep a full blast. Those are not Okay, right here. Excellent. Let's move on. Now heads up. In analysis mode, you can ferret out background noise and conversations if the roller got close enough. This tech records everything, every little detail, even the sights and sounds the roller was never aware of. To see the sources of the recorded sensory signals, switch to the audio layer in the editor. Go ahead and try that now. Okay, good. Now you should see several sound signatures in the store. Choose one and hone in on it. Pack of six, case of brosif, and a couple of zappers. Okay. We have a deal today on two flavors. Cuddy and no. Serpentine. Everybody! On the... So, any thoughts? Unbelievable. Seriously. Like what's happening right next to me. Yeah, it's how BD recording implants work. They pick up everything, all the elements in the background. Then an editor tweaks them, makes them pop. Keep playing with the sound, explore it a bit. We'll move on when you get bored. Uh, what a sheer kiss in the flooring! Money! Never. Sometimes you can analyze extra layers in the raw. Stuff the rollers cyberware picked up. Like what? Ev's got Kiroshi optics that grab infrared. Meaning you should be able to grab heat signatures from her recording. Huh. <laughs> Hello, nice. Scanning works on peeps, too. Walk up to the wounded chick. Try scanning her. Alright, next thing. Scroll forward to the part where our artist gets a lead injection. Where I will fucking drop you, I swear to God! Well, no! Fucking head off! See that? They shot him and he never saw it coming. But you will. Here it comes. My favorite part of the game. See the blinking thing over the entrance? Surveillance cam. Must have caught our shooter. You'll see in a sec. Cam feeds to the screen behind the clerk. Roll back to where the screen's in the kid's field of vision. Then scan it. His own chumba shot him. Probably planned to all along. Must have got a nice slice of cred on the black market for a BD like this. BD freaks are ready to pay a preem for a real flatline. Anyway, if you've seen enough, you can exit. Yeah, it's impressive, right? It's too bad most of the BDs we do here are only good for flogging the law. So Braindance is a pretty big part of the cyberpunk universe. It's not just something used for adult films. There is an awful lot to it. And there's two sides I'd really like you guys to help me explore. First is the lore. So how this actually fits into the universe. And then there's the gameplay side. So how players will be interacting with it. So Patrick, could you tell us more about the lore of Braindance? I would love to. Uh, so in the world of Cyberpunk 2077, Braindance was invented way back in the early 2000s at UC Santa Cruz. It was developed as a way of recording a person's experiences and then playing them back for someone else as, so that they could relive them as though it was happening to them. It was originally used for things like therapy and prisoner rehabilitation, but by 2077 it's become this global media industry, including things like movies, mass, mass entertainment, things like that, video games, some interactive things and of course adult fare as well. Now in our game we deal a lot with black brain dances or XBDs as we call them and there are different types of those but the one that you saw in the trailer just there was a flatliner. Now that's where the person recording it actually died. of a thrill but a mercenary can also use them for various things, and you'll see that in the game, of course. And from the gameplay perspective, we have been working a lot throughout last years trying to figure out the best way how to use the brain dance in the game as a mechanics. So what we have settled on is this brain dance editor mode. As a player, you will be able to run the brain dance in the editor mode and see 
different clues that have been registered on the peripheral of given actor. Now, as a player, you can slide on the timeline of the recording back and forth, trying to uncover different clues. And that clues are actually telling a story in the game. So as a player, you will run different investigations that will lead you to uh, different mysteries and you will uncover them actually using that brain dance as a mechanics in the game. So as Pavel was saying, we use brain dance as a storytelling tool. It's not a collectible. It's not something where you're going to go in and you're going to play it and you're going to be like, ah, I've seen this before. What we use brain dance for is to give you a keyhole into the life of the residents of Night City. And we can explore things like childhood trauma, religion, various philosophical ideas in a way that you might not otherwise experience in a story about a mercenary on the tough streets. So we've tried to talk about some of the aspects that we think the community will find really exciting, but you know, while you're both here, I'd love to know what is it about Cyberpunk that you guys are really excited for? Uh, Patrick, why don't you start? So one of the things that I'm most excited about in this game is the characters and the way they interact with the world. We've got this really interesting world that stretches all the way back to the Cyberpunk 2020 source material and all of these events and all of those things, but those don't mean anything unless they connect with characters. And so when we come up with a character, we start with their function. What is this person? What do they do in the story? But we don't stop there. We go back and we figure out what was their childhood like? What was their upbringing like? What kind of obstacles did they face in this harsh reality? And did they overcome them? And how did they overcome them? Or did they not overcome them? And why? And you can see all of those things in their environment, in their dialogues, in sort of how they operate in the world. And we come up with that for all of our characters. Now you look at someone like Victor Vector, and you're gonna see stories about his past in his environment and in his dialogue. You know, we come up with that stuff even if we don't use it in the game because it helps inform us as to who these characters are. And uh, for me, I, I would not be myself if I would not say that I'm the most excited about our quests. Like with our Witcher 3 team, with, with Patrick and like everybody that has stayed with us since the Witcher 3 time, we really have grown so much. Uh, we have learned so much and we have used all that experience to put them into the quest that we have made and you will not find really a, a filler in this game like everything has a meaning like we put so much effort into making sure that everything is rewarding is interesting is talking about characters as Patrick said is talking about worlds is talking about emotions like touching the player in a really like a real way um, and I just can't wait to find out what you think Pavel, I know you mentioned story and, and quests and writing quests. And when I was last in the studio, I had a look and I saw a notebook on your desk. And I would love for you to show everybody this notebook. <laughs> okay, Holly, I mean, you asked for it. So um, this is uh, my notebook. It says uh, Salsa Quest Designer. Uh, the reason is because I dance salsa and I'm a quest designer. So, you know, <laughs> so, so I wrote, started this notebook actually when we were really starting Cyberpunk. At the very beginning, I wrote the, like a first note and it says pretty much something around, along the lines of a, that we were starting with a prototype. And then, you know, I kept on uh, basically noting things that we've been working on um, for like next years. I remember once when our concept artists actually approached me and they said that they want to take a look on my notebook. I was like, what for actually? And they, they, they took some pictures um, and they told me, uh, yeah, well, you know, because we are looking for a reference material for a, a notes of a psychopathic killer. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, well, uh, you may um, find maybe some of my notes um, in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Pavel and Patrick, thank you so much for joining me. I'm pretty lucky because I have read some of the stories that you and the team have written for Braindance, and I'm pretty excited for people to discover them. But uh, before we do finish today's episode, there is just one more thing we'd like to talk about. Earlier in this episode, I mentioned that media have been getting hands-on with the opening of Cyberpunk 2077, and they should be posting their impressions right about now. And if you missed anything from today's episode, don't worry, we'll be uploading everything to our channels very soon. And finally, on behalf of everybody at CD Projekt Red, we just want to say thank you so much for joining us for this the very first episode of Night City Wire. But don't worry, we'll be back with episode two in just a few weeks. So we shall see you soon.
on. Um, I'm just going to get right into it because now you guys are free to talk about actually playing Cyberpunk. Take, do you want to take it away, Jake? What, what from that presentation had you already seen? So I, I hadn't seen a lot of that in my playthrough because I was kind of messing around. So I just explored Night City. I was messing around with NPCs, the environment and whatnot. However, I did see a lot of that in uh, some B-roll they had sent over. So I was very familiar with what we saw for the most part. There was a lot of, there was a lot of other stuff in there, but like, I guess just top level impressions based on what I played. It seems like a, I, I hate comparing it to things, but it reminded me a lot of GTA, but with very heavy RPG elements, just in like how it felt walking around this giant city with pedestrians walking around in the way you'd hop in a car and you could switch to thir third person mode and drive around the city going to different objectives. But the big thing that really stood out to me that I'm really excited to see more of is just how dense and populated the city is and how and, and, and how much detail there is there. Like I spent so much time just like, I had a, I had a developer with me and he, I could not just follow one path. I drive, I don't know, probably like 20 meters and I'd be like, oh, and I'd hop out of my car and I'd check out a little side alley and it would open up into this big marketplace uh, where there'd be tons of characters walking around and there'd be music blaring and the advertisements are kind of overwhelming, but in a good way. Uh, in a way that you, that probably should be the case in a cyberpunk world, but man, yeah, top level stuff. It it is, it reminded me a lot of, like a GTA RPG. So where did you actually like? What part of the game did you actually play, Tam? So in our demo, we played through. We got to pick between one of the uh, starting life paths. There's three. There's Corpo. Uh, there is Street Kid, and then there's Nomad. Um, and we have an impressions video coming up later on. You should see it on uh, youtubecom gamespot and gamespot.com, where myself, Jake, and Ed talk about each of those paths and the three divergent styles that we played. But um, we we each got to start the game at the very beginning pick a life path which is an origin story think of it in the same way that you would in dragon age um you pick a you know a starting point for your character and then you were basically left to do what you wanted to do from the outset of the game so it's the very beginning of the game in my playthrough i decided to follow the main quest for a little bit and see where that takes me and it for the most part was beat for beat quite similar to last year's gameplay demo where you do the opening mission where you go to the apartment and rescue the lady in the bathtub and uh, kind of turn her over to the trauma team to take care of and then you go you meet Dexter Deshaun and then you start doing the kind of um, maelstrom mission to get the uh, the AI controlled or mind controlled uh, turret back and it kind of escalates from that point. Um, from that point on, it kind of branches off into smaller other, you can do side quests or you can do things that are still tied to the main quests, but are like the, the main crux of the area, the point, the part I was in was a heist good to go into a certain person's, uh, home or office and steal certain things. And there's a lot of setup to getting that done. Um, and part of that setup is the brain dance. So before we move on to the brain dance, I just have a couple more questions about, <clears throat> sorry, my, um, Jake, you were saying that, you know, you couldn't really go more than 20 meters without kind of being distracted and wanting to see something new. What's there to keep pushing you to continue the main story? Or are you just free to do whatever you want in this world? Uh, so, I mean, after you pick your origin story at the beginning, I went with Nomad, um, which started me out in the Badlands. Uh, after you complete that and you get to Night City, there's like a time skip. Uh, which we didn't get to see what happens in between. They said there's going to be a cinematic or some sort of thing prepared that'll go over all that kind of stuff. We didn't get to see that. They just put us right into Night City uh, where you do a, I, I believe you do another quest and then from then on you go back to your apartment and it just kind of opens up. Your directive is to go to talk to Jackie because he's he he's talking to Dexter Deshaun about a job. However, I didn't really do that. Uh, Immediately, I walked out of the. I walked out of my apartment, went to a shop, bought a knife, walked down and stabbed a Night City PD just in the back to see what would happen. And the the whole crowd started panicking and people started freaking out. But then from there, I just kind of 
went in my own direction. I really only explored one of the major districts. I think I saw bits and pieces of other ones, but I was mostly in, I want to say maybe the city center. I forget exactly what district I was in. Um, but yeah, like to stay there, there is like that dotted line, um, to different objectives and you can track quests just like you could in the Witcher. But like I said, there was so much both showing up on my map that were like distracting, not in a bad way, but I was just like, Ooh, this seems interesting. And then there was also other things in the environment that just stood out that I was like, I have to see what this is about. Oh yeah. I mean, like you were saying, it's a very dense world that it looks like. Um, Tam, I'm going to ask you a little bit about gameplay wise. What did it actually feel like to walk around in? And how did the actually, and, and also combat, how did that feel? So um, I think like to walk around in, it's it's quite, I think the, the kind of crux of my preview that is now live on the site was everything felt kind of overwhelming. And like Jake said earlier, overwhelming in the right way. Um, there was so much to, it felt like it reminded me of being in Tokyo for the first time where it felt familiar, like the building blocks of the city were things that you've seen before, but the sense of just stimulus coming from literally every direction, it kind of makes your nerves tingle a bit. And that's where that sense of like losing, not losing focus, but not sure where to put your focus happens. Um, so like, it felt like a futuristic metropolis you know metropolitan uh, metropolis where you're where you're just trying to make your way around and you could like walk around for hours probably and just kind of drink it in and and see what happens um unfortunately we didn't really have hours to do that so it was just a little bit of walking around and there's a, it is a bustling city with a lot to stare at and interact with and listen to and but the actual gameplay, um, the shooting was the kind of main thing that I specced, not specced into, but like ended up doing. And it felt really, really satisfying. Even so, that I, the, one of the things that I mentioned in my preview is I struggle with games that are like RPG shooters, looter shooters, whatever you want to call them. Not a lot of them always hit for me, like feeling good and feeling satisfying because you're chipping away at health, you're, you know, you're shooting at shields, that kind of stuff. And although you are kind of doing that, this feels like it still is satisfying to do. Like a game like Borderlands, I mentioned in my preview, is one that doesn't quite work for me in the same way like a Destiny would. Because Destiny's guns feel impactful. Whereas Borderlands guns are cool and quirky, but they don't always have that, that kind of satisfying punch to them. This is a game where the guns have a satisfying punch to them when they need to. Obviously, there are guns that feel a little lighter and more lithe, but... For the most part everything felt good to shoot and it felt good to like shoot at things um even if that meant you were you were kind of like shooting at shields or chipping away at health um at the same time there was a lot of opportunity to About. there's so much for you to keep in mind and spec into and and that kind of stuff um it just feels like a i mean i'd say very similar to tomorrow i played as kind of like a uh, uh i tried to play as a net runner but because i was in the game i didn't have a lot of abilities. I only was able to hack a couple things and a couple characters, which was a lot of fun. Like a hacking mini game pops up and I actually had a lot of fun playing the hacking mini game to the point where I like wanted to hack more just because I had fun matching the numbers. Um, but as a, I don't know, I guess a, a, a early net runner, I was mostly botching a lot of these experience, these hacking things. So I would try to hack, I'd maybe hack a couple things and then someone would catch my scent and then I'd go guns blazing. And it was a lot of shooting, which I, which I was cool with. Cause that's something, that's a way that I will probably end up playing. I did notice like 
Now we played a preview build, an early build, so it's not done, but the shooting didn't feel as precise as something like Destiny or Call of Duty. However, kind of like Tamor was saying, like, the shooting still felt very satisfying and i think a lot of that is due to the fact that these guns kick like a donkey and um the the sound effects are really good like it just feels really satisfying to shoot things even like i used the smaller pistol a lot because my pistol skill was getting high and i had fun using the pistol uh and even that like it sure was a small dinky little pistol but it really did feel like i i was like packing iron i was ready to go uh, so, so that was great. And then I also noticed a, we played on controller. They didn't want us to use mouse and keyboard. Um, so we played controller and I did notice there was a pretty generous aim assist. Um, mm. I don't know how much you'll be able to uh, tweak when the, the final game comes out, but. Tom? Yeah, I was going to say that we didn't play on mouse and keyboard. Mainly we should say we, we the the reason we played with the controller is because we used we played through the cloud using a special um kind of uh, bit of software um and that meant that we weren't able to engage with the uh, mouse and keyboard it wasn't a technical limitation or anything like that um it was just a matter of the software would get confused if we were both trying to input at the same time using mouse and, key mouse and keyboard and a controller um yeah and and so that was the reason we played on controller but like jake said um the con controller stuff felt fine it felt good um it, you know shooting with with it, it was it had that good sense of feedback on a controller that you get um which is the same you know on whether you're playing with mouse and keyboard or controller but yeah i think those who want to play on mouse and keyboard or those who play, want to play on controller should be well taken care of so one thing I was going to ask, obviously the game is still in development, you are playing through the cloud, so it's not exactly apples to apples when you're playing it at home and it's the final product, but how did it run, Jake? So it ran pretty smooth uh, for me for the most part in terms of just like frame rate and all that stuff. There were some crowded areas where it would dip a little bit, but you know, once again, we, we kind of trust that that stuff will be worked out when the game comes out and they did delay it. Um, I did run into bugs. Uh, I did run into a good amount of bugs, nothing game breaking, um, but there were definitely some bugs here and there, some funny ones that, that happened. Uh, I mean, you know, with games this big, that kind of stuff is bound to happen. Like there's so many, I guess, funny bugs in The Witcher and whatnot. Um, but once again, you know, it's kind of hard to say what the final release will be like because they did just delay it and they said mostly to squash bugs. But overall, like, uh, I mean, streaming it on pc i have pretty good internet so it works pretty well in that sense uh i didn't have any latency or lag or anything like that but the game itself seemed to run pretty well um from what i could tell i'm definitely excited to you know when i play this on pc to really dig into all those settings and see how far we'll be able to push this game before we dig into what we saw in night city wire are there any final comments about your t your hands on time i'll time i'll go to you first um, yeah, I think I think the thing that I walked away from uh, playing it was I just had seen a fraction of it, and it sounds very much like what they say in the Night City Wire. This is just a small piece of it, but it really does feel like it was a very, very small piece of the game. We played for four hours, and I still kind of, my mind was racing with wanting to do 10 different things at the same time, and, you know, there's so many paths that you can take. I wanted to stop and try something, reload it, and start again, but um, I wasn't able to, but I think the, the thing that I'm most excited about is when people do get their hands on the game, it looks like there's going to be plenty for us to really dissect and think about and talk about, so that's the most exciting thing about it for me right now. Jake, what about you? Yeah, so there's two things that I do want to mention. The first is that there's pubic hair customization. Found that out in the uh, character creator because <laughs> we started out by doing that, which is something that I like had to double take. I was like, I don't know if I actually saw that. And then Ed was talking about it too. And I was like, okay, I did actually see a pubic hair option. I didn't mess with most of the customization options just because I didn't want to spend too much time in the character creator. I wanted to get in and play. Uh, and then the other thing I want to mention is that V has like, one thing I noticed is that V has like a phone, essentially. I mean, it's not called a phone in the cyberpunk universe, I forget what it's called, but they get messages and whatnot. And I'm curious to see what kind of role that will play because I was getting messages as I played and I checked those and a lot of times it would be like, hey, we've got a job for you, which, which would lead to a quest, which I could track right then and there. 
Um, but I'm also curious to see how that will work with characters because there were some I could respond to. Like I didn't pick what I wanted to say. It was just a predetermined thing. I just hit respond and then V would write something and send. But I'm curious to see like if that will come into play in a sense like it, uh, like GTA 4 did almost where like your buddies would be like, hey, do you want to hang out? Do you want to go to a bar or whatnot? Because that is something that this game seems to have a lot of is like what you do when you're not killing people, how you blow off steam and whatnot. So I'm very curious to yeah. see how that's going to tie into the very different relationships and characters you meet throughout the game. Because personally, I love that stuff in games when there's like a little phone and you've got your side conversations going on. My God, I hope there is a reference where some character asks if you want to go bowling in that case. <laughs> it's gotta be. <laughs> there has to be. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what we saw in Night City Wire. So we had some more details from Pavel uh, Sasko, lead quest designer, uh, talked a little bit about the districts. We got to see the seventh district, which is called the Badlands. Big kind of Mad Max vibes there. Very cool. I need to, I need to talk about this guy, Adam Smasher. <laughs> I'm obsessed with this. What an incredible name. Uh, absolutely. Like, I was sad that there was no Keanu Reeves, but it's fine. We had Adam Smasher. What a great name. Um, what were the highlights yeah. from that section before we start talking about uh, Edge Runners? Yeah. Tao, good evening. The Adam Smasher thing is actually interesting because it kind of feeds into the brain dance stuff. I'm interested to see how that character carries on or appears in that game um the, during the section that they show him walking towards a um, elevator you are actually in a brain dance at that time um and the person who is seeing adam smasher actually gets scared and when you're reliving that brain dance as v you feel that fear which is an interesting kind of layered thing so when this happens in the game, the character you're, you're inhabiting is a woman and you can feel her or they, they through the presentation show that she's scared and then that feeling of fear lingers with V. So there's an interesting kind of like um, a, a lingering effect of what you do and the emotions and the feelings you have in a brain dance that kind of can carry into the real life in the game. So we'll see what that means narratively and in terms of characterization for V and doing these brain dances. Um, but yeah, that section is really, really cool. Um, it's, it's, it's like one of the things that we talked about earlier, an unexpected part of the cyberpunk gameplay experience. Um, the investigative stuff and, and that kind of business is something that I'm super into. So I'm, I think that looks, that stuff looks really cool. Yeah, that's actually a very nice segue into the brain dance segment. I mean, I genuinely hadn't, I deliberately didn't speak to you guys about what you'd seen, um, just so that I would be kind of fresh to it. And I expected you to be able to play those sequences. I didn't realize there would be that level of detail where it is like a Batman, Arkham Origins, kind of the crime scene investigation, rewinding, positioning, uh, similar from Arkham Knight 2. That was really, really cool. Um, I wonder, like, how much of the plot is going to be in these brain dance segments? Uh, Jake, did you get any indication? Not really. I actually didn't have a chance to check out the brain dance sections because I spent more time messing around. But one thing that <laughs> uh, Ed said when we were doing our impressions, he said it reminded him a lot of Tacoma. I don't know if you guys played that, but uh, I can definitely see it watching the gameplay and how you're basically rewinding and replaying specific sections and you're trying to key in on specific items and figure out details uh and you know you know i think it's kind of neat to see that sort of system from a very small indie game in this like giant triple a game um not that they necessarily not that they necessarily stole that idea or you know took reference from it but uh it it's just interesting to see i love this guy because mm. he basically looks like octane from uh yeah Apex legends there. <laughs> yeah this this um, actual right, this I was gonna say this this uh, brain dance section is is a tutorial for the the actual gameplay mechanic, and it involves these two characters holding up the store, and at mm -hmm. the end of it, the person holding up the store dies, and the tutorial is 
a kind of investigation into how this character or this robber gets killed because it, it's uncertain. So they use this as a, it's a really interesting little setup and they use this as to teach the player about how brain dances work. And then they very quickly become more elaborate from this point on. I got to do two during my playthrough and this was the simpler of the two. The other one was shortly after Adam Smasher gives you the dirty look in the elevator. What was that one like? Can you describe it? So that one was actually a, the, the Adam Smasher, post Adam Smasher one was a uh, part of a heist that you are planning for. So the, the whole point of a brain dance is it, like they said in the, in the actual gameplay demo, it captures a scene, a memory and recreates it for others to experience. Usually it gets used for pornography, but certain characters like Judy Alvarez, I think her name was, she's able to edit them and recreate them so you can relive them outside of Horny reasons, um, and so you're as V. You're scouting out this um, this this apartment because it belongs to the son of uh, one of the mega corporations that controls Night City. And this person has a special piece of technology that you want to steal. Um, and what you have to do is, the person you're living the the uh, the the memory as is someone that has. A close relationship with this uh, this person, um, let's call it, and you are reliving the memory so you can investigate the room, see what its layout is, try and figure out where the item you want to steal is placed, listen to the conversation, maybe get an idea of what his plans are, and and kind of generally build a foolproof heist before you actually go in there and do it yourself. Um, and it's really, really interesting because it was more elaborate than the liquor store hold up one, but it's still quite maintained, quite limited in, in, in kind of like how it played out. The uh, character um, would just move uh, across a room and you'd just kind of track him and listen in on his conversation. And then you'd switch to like a heat signature um, layer and try and find out where the item is, is located because it needed to be super cool. So you're looking for the coldest spot in the room. Um, so it was part of the, the kind of like build up towards making a more complex, but it still hit that kind of, um, I'm an I'm investigator and I'm figuring something out, um, pleasure node in the brain that people get out of these kind of experiences. Um, so it was, it was fun and it was intricate and interesting in a way that, you know, is a nice refreshing change of pace from the usual shooting sneaking of the main game. Um, all right, so I think in terms of the first Night City Wire presentation, there wasn't, you know, a Keanu moment. There wasn't a Grimes moment. There was an anime moment. So I'm going to go to our resident mm. anime expert, Jake. What did you think of the anime reveal? I'll pass it on to Timur. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wow. I, <don't> know. <laughs> I, I, I'm very excited to see what this will be. I will definitely watch it just because I'm very into cyberpunk. Not super into anime. Uh, mm, but we'll anime. see. Maybe, maybe this will this will change my mind. I know Studio Trigger, like them doing this, is a very big deal, uh, and they have made some very good anime. But I couldn't tell you what that is. So I think uh, I think Tamor is going to have to uh, teach us teach me a lesson here. Uh, I think we should clip out uh, that that moment where Jake says, "I'm very excited for anime, for an anime." So, uh, um, <laughs> just when we have it for posterity, yeah. Studio Trigger, one of the most uh, you know talented animation studios in the world, definitely in Japan, um, known for animes like uh, Kill la Kill, mainly, um, and recently they put out Pome um, in 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 kind of uh, uh, cinemas and both critically acclaimed. They have other stuff that they've done as well, Little Witch Academia and and uh, Grin Lagan, I think was them as well. Um, but they are a fantastic animation studio. They have a very distinct style that works really, really well with um, kind of cyberpunk. Uh, and they, they've been, it's coming out in 2022, which means, and, and everything that's happening in here is a, it's got, it takes place in Night City and shares the world of cyberpunk, but a unique story, unique characters, which is incredibly exciting. They've shown off one teaser image, which is like a kid who looks like um, uh, a character out of uh, Kill la Kill or Grin Lagan, just kind of peering over a shoulder and wearing the iconic jacket. And it looks awesome. I think the thing that 
kind of takes it to the next level is the music is actually being done by Akira Yamaoka, who is the composer behind Silent Hill and and various uh, entries in the Silent Hill franchise and just an absolute like legend in the gaming industry. So the fact that we've got Studio Trigger teaming up with Akira Yamaoka to make a cyberpunk anime is pretty exciting. Um, I think it's coming to Netflix in 2022, um, which means we'll probably be done by the game by then. So perfect timing. <laughs> All right, that just about wraps it up. Uh, Jake, any more final comments on what we saw this morning or what you had ha hands on with? Uh, huh. There was something that I had in my head a while ago, but I forgot what it was that I wanted to say. Was Come it back smooth, to me. Smooth, uh, smooth genitals, because I, I, uh, I <laughs> went into the genital section as well. And um, immediately you can change your genital size, you can pick your genital type, or you can just get rid of it. So I did the smooth boy just to um, just to see what was that like, and it was it's absolutely fine, no issues. The smooth Ken, boys are the Ken fine. Doll. Yeah, the Ken doll. It. Ken doll. Ken it. <laughs> oh you can you can pick your size if you want to. Um, yeah, I don't know if I, I don't know if that it's going to become visible at any point. My hope is that you are able I to think take it your clothes will. off and walk around. <laughs> No, there is you can I, you can get sex workers, you can uh, hook up with people. I fully anticipate there's going to be nudity in it. I sure I want to do a I, will... I am I'm changing my run to a stealth no kill fully nude run. So, um it's going to be exciting. You can watch the stream of it on twitchtv gamespot That's not happening by the way. So, I'm fine. <laughs> I've already put it in my calendar. I really want to see it. Uh, Jake, has that thought come back to you? Uh, I mean, one thing that, that I thought was pretty funny was the store that I bought the knife from was called Second Amendment. Um, I <laughs> guess another thing that was kind of cool was the, the, the Nomad Path started out in the Badlands and seeing that, seeing what's outside of Night City was really awesome. Um, and I'm excited to check out the other life paths and i guess the other thing too to bring up is that we are going to be doing a q a video next week so if you have any questions for us about cyberpunk and what we played make sure to uh tweet it either myself tomorrow or edmund tran because we're going to get back together and try to answer all the questions that you guys might have keep in mind that we did only play four hours and it was very early in the game so we didn't see a whole lot um but there's still a lot to talk about getting the band back together for your Q and A, all right, we're gonna uh, we're gonna show the video of your impressions. Um, so kind of more in depth chat about what you guys played, featuring all the new gameplay. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning, um, and we'll be back again next time. There is a Night City Wire play for all streams. We're doing charity streams every day, and um, we will see you next time. Hey everyone, the three of us just played four hours of Cyberpunk each. We all picked different life paths and we all played slightly differently. In this video, we're gonna go over what differences we encountered during our play demo. So let's start with Ed. So I went with Corpo. It starts off with you throwing up in a sink and your initial story is um, you're a counterintelligence operative and your boss wants to sort of take down his boss. Unfortunately, um, the higher ups get wind of it and you end up getting your life to basically like torn to shreds, like all of your money, like all of your like insurance, your entire life that's been supported by this corporate job of yours is gone. And you end up on the street basically from uh, starting from scratch. You're already friends with uh, your partner Jackie at this point. And so he kind of helps you out and helps you get back on your feet. And then Tamor, you picked the street rat or yeah, the street kid. Street kid, yeah. Um, so my one, I start off in a bar um, and the street kid has got some connections and is like street, street wary and wily um, and is uh, from Night City or treats it like home and helps out one of the bartenders at the bar who's got a uh, ongoing debt towards one of the fixers. And he kind of asks you to go speak to the fixer and try and help out and alleviate or get his debt settled entirely. So you go and do that and you have an argument with this fixer who's an out of towner and you kind of throw your weight around as a local. He shows you like this um, magazine and there's a sports car on there. And he's like, steal that sports car. It's top of the line, it will clear the debt. So you go over, you get pointed to the right direction by his inside man. And then you start stealing 
Um, and the moment you start getting the car, like this hand comes through the window and tells you to get out. And obviously you kind of like pull away and try to use the device. The device doesn't work. You get pulled out of the car, you're about to get beaten up, but then the cops show up and they kind of put both of you to the ground. And then someone like an elite or 1% that shows up and is like, it's not worth wasting your time, throw them both out. Um, so you get chucked out onto the street. The person who pulled you out of the car was Jackie. And he's like, that, that's how you meet. I was told there's a montage that shows your progression through the years. It wasn't mm -hmm. actually in our my demo. Um, I'm not sure if it was any of yours, but it's, effectively it's kind of like, a, we were told like a an animated sequence of some sort. Um, or a cinematic sequence that kind of shows that you guys stuck together for a while, did a bunch of jobs, you had a history, and then you pick up with the main story. Yeah, so I played the Nomad Path, and the Nomad Path begins with your character V tearing off the, I don't know, the, the, the badge of their clan and heading into Night City in order to smuggle something into the city. And your car breaks down in this small town out way outside of Night City in this desert town and you're trying to repair your car. You repair your car to meet your contact who has the thing that you're trying to smuggle in. It turns out to be Jackie. You meet him, talk with him a little bit, and then you and Jackie head to the border where you have to get out of the car and they do an inspection. Uh, and you have to talk to a, uh, uh, I guess a border agent, I would say. And they ask you some questions, hop back in the car. And then as you're driving, there's a roadblock that they've set up and then there's a firefight that happens and eventually that section ends and then apparently we get the cutscene too that would lead you into how the game starts and then mm. once you've done those introductions it sounds like the game for the most part is very similar like all three paths kind of merged now sit down and tell me what's got your shorts in it's good to see you too jack how you been so with that out of the way how did you guys play? I, I like to spec into like handguns specifically, um, handguns and melee and stealth. Um, and I found that I ended up relying on my handgun a lot because given that this is so early in the game, a lot of the stealth skills that are actually useful aren't available to you unless you unlock them with perks. So I found myself failing stealth a lot and ending up in a lot of firefights. Yeah, so I, I put together one of the classic, like I don't know what I'm doing trash builds. <laughs> where like i was just like oh how do i usually play and i i didn't learn the lesson that ed clearly did very quickly so obviously ed is always smarter than me um oh. but like i did the thing where i specced into stealth and specced into cool and body so i was yeah. like i can be sneaky and i can talk my way out of things and have a bit of charisma obviously I didn't think about the fact that it would take a while for that to come into full effect so I ended up being a kind of a run and gun kick the door in type person who is clearly incapable of doing it because I'm spec towards stealth. <laughs> so I created like a bumbling idiot of a V, but it still, it didn't lock me out of anything. I was still quite capable, like in firefights, I was winning. Yeah, it's important to note that if you do pick up something that's not in your wheelhouse, you can still get better at it by just doing the thing. Mm. So if, if I, like, I didn't have any shotgun skills at all, but if I picked up a shotgun and started shooting it a bunch, you would rank up with the gun. And... Yeah, it's, it's kind of like Skyrim, where the yeah. thing you do, you get better at. It's funny you mentioned the cool thing, because when I created my character, I dumped all my points into cool right away. And the person I was playing with, the dev, was like, eh, may not want to do that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, well, what if I want to play like a net runner? So he had me spec into intelligence and I think technical ability was what it was called. But what I found out too is cool is connected to stealth. And I ended up using a lot of stealth because kind of like your guys' experience, I ended up being trash at net running just because I didn't really have many abilities unlocked. And I, and I imagine that's going to be a similar sort of experience for most people who start this game. Maybe not so much using firearms, but I think you're going to spec into something and then as you play, you're going to figure out how you actually want to play, at least early mm. on. It's important to note that we played the first four or five hours of the game of like what is going to be like a 50, 60 hour game. So a lot of the stuff that really will matter in the end um, doesn't really come into play. So like in, in the cool perk system, there's like a, it's like a cold blood like uh, ability. So when you like get super cool, you have like a, uh, buffed abilities and that kind of stuff yeah i i the, the small amounts of stealth that i did manage to pull off was 
quite interesting because it was like a mixture of my stealth movement and also using the Netrunner stuff, um, like hacking into a camera. I, I didn't realize that when you hack into a camera, they're very frightening, those cameras, because they fire out yeah. laser beams laser and like it blankets the entire thing and they move around. And I was like, damn, how do I even begin to do this? And I didn't realize that actually when you hack into a camera, you effectively take it over and it's yours, but it doesn't change the red laser into green yeah. to be like, hey, you're green now. It's good um, now. It's a good laser. Yeah, it's a good laser. So like doing the small amounts of I'm sneaking, hacking that thing, using it to distract enemies, the way like the two different divergent styles of play kind of mesh together was really interesting. So I'm looking forward to see how they can be paired up with like, you know, Netrunner's ability, hacking abilities with the stealth and then stealth's abilities kind of complemented by the, you know, powerful gun kind of like spec and that kind of stuff. That was the one thing, almost every encounter, I started out by hacking into the local network or whatever it might be. And once you do that, you it basically when, when it highlights all the different things you can hack which i think because i was pretty early i wasn't able to hack a lot but there were like fans i could hack to distract enemies there were cameras you could hack you could hack certain npcs too to get other npcs to come by you could hack grenades to make them explode okay so we've talked about playstyle we've talked about origin how about how you guys just kind of played this demo. There was a lot we could do. They didn't really put any restrictions on us at all in terms of what we could do. Uh, so how did you guys spend your four hours? My one was probably the most plain playthrough in that I jumped into it and just kind of followed the main path and quickly realized that it was a familiar path. I talk about this in my written preview, but it's it's the a lot of it was the missions that we saw in the um, gameplay demos from the past two years. Obviously, this is the first time we've actually played it for ourselves. I think the actual main path, at least to start with, is a really good um, example of the different facets of the gameplay mechanics. Like that first mission you do with um, for Dexter Deshawn, you get a good flavor of what is hacking like, what is uh, combat like, what is sneaking like, and you can start to figure out. I like, I've got a feel for the hacking. I really like that, so I'm going to spec towards that. Um, and then I use the kind of final moments to try and find some some like side quests that were interesting. The side quests are what everyone loves from Witcher. So I wanted one of those at least and I found that. Yeah, I mean, I probably took the exact opposite approach in that I didn't even really do side quests. I just roamed the world and messed around. Like the first thing I did when I got out of V's apartment is I took, I bought a knife from uh, the store called 21st Amendment and stabbed the cop because I don't know, he was out there and I want to see what would happen, which is something different from The Witcher 3, right? Because, well, A, there's no cops, but also you can't just start destroying a town in The Witcher, right? Because Geralt is this character who wouldn't do that. But in this, uh, you have that freedom. I got to, I forget how much the warrant was. And then it, I got a notification saying the, the, the NCPD are now after me. And that was pretty interesting just because I, I don't know immediately i thought of gta um, yeah like big sense. gta vibes coming from this game uh but, but you can also help the cops too like you can go yeah. past like a hold up or something and help them out um there are a lot of incidental things happening in the city that you can just join in on in fact the incidental stuff remind me a lot of red dead like you'd just be walking around and there'd be a firefight between cops and gangs and you could help out one of the sides you could just walk yeah. away or sometimes there'd just be a bunch of guys guarding a cache or something and you could yeah. go in Little kill bit. them take it or occasionally with your when you get your upgraded eye i forget what they call it mm. your upgraded vision yeah. uh, you can actually see if there's a warrant out on npcs or, and you can just examine them and if you see warrant out on this arrest for this amount you can kill them and you'll automatically get that money transferred mm. into your account I, I mentioned this to jake earlier but i was doing some of that kind of exploring and found an incidental thing which was like uh, gang fighting each other a couple of gangs and i was like i'm just gonna check this out in the moment i realized i should probably get on with my my actual quest is when one of them threw a grenade at another one another one and missed completely and the grenade just landed at my feet and i was like i am i am not here for this i'm out after hearing about Timur's experience i wanted to go see a lot more side quests um but i think given that this is so early in the game and the game actually does want to put you through those main quests to get give you the breadth of experience there weren't that many other proper side missions that I could do. The side quests that I did find did look at sort of the kookier nature of like the cyberpunk world. So one had you get into a, like a fight club situation with these twins who had 
uh, merge their consciousnesses to be one person. Um, and there's a lot of like funny banter between them and like stuff about them sharing girlfriends and that kind of stuff. And basically you just had to fight them both at once. And then there was another one where a guy's augmented penis had gone haywire and you had to rush him to the Ripper dock basically. And like, there's a whole bunch of car banter in between there. And so that's, that's kind of the, the world they're trying to set up. And it's, it's not all like, grim dark uh, cyberpunk stuff there is mm. a bit of there's a lot of levity in there i think the most interesting thing for me is how much the corpo stuff played into the main quest but since my character came from a corpo background like there's that whole thing where one of your uh contacts uh sets you up she gives you like a like a credit ship to, with a virus to like um like sabotage the the marauders mm. uh basically if you take the corpo path your character basically knows all the shit that she's gonna pull and you can just call her out on it and just oh. yeah just basically you are in the position of power there mm. um which i found quite interesting when i did that i i decided to ignore her completely so the in the original demos they do that bit where they go to her get the chip and then go to the uh, maelstrom gang and eventually things kick off so i was like i'm gonna just ignore that because i want to get into it as quick as possible um and the first thing I do when I meet with the bad guy uh, is, is, or the gang leader, is shoot him in the head and kill him, like straight away. Because it's like, um, you don't have the money to do anything else, or your, your choices are either to kill him or get killed. Um, and that knock-on effect is, in the original, when you did the kind of corpo route as well, that dude would get away and then come back later with his exoskeleton and fight you. This time around, because he was dead, there was just no one in that area. Like there was two guards who were just like knocked out. And I was like, I'm out. Um, so like there is, there is like very noticeable changes to what happens in a mission, depending on how you do them. In my playthrough, I could not focus on the main path at all. Like almost every every corner I turned, I was like, oh, this looks interesting. And I'd get out and check it mm -hmm. out just because the world is so dense. But I found one small alley that opened up into this huge, marketplace area where there are all these characters wandering around like it was packed and there was a guy on the corner who was like you know he's, he's, a, he's a sidewalk preacher yelling about how cybernetics are destroying people and the next generation needs to stop uh, cybering up their bodies so they can so they can continue to live and and whatnot and i was watching him for a little bit because i was just like ah sure and two like trendy looking girls walked up with phones and immediately started like oh this is the crazy guy everyone's been talking about like like let, let's get some pictures of them and they start like taking selfies with them and whatnot and he just keeps yelling about it and he's getting frustrated and i'm just sitting here watching this whole thing play out it is a very dense and distracting world and trying to block all that out and actually look at the city for what the city is like is is very nice like i really appreciated how sort of it was built it's a very it's got a lot of verticality to it there are a lot of stairs mm -hmm. and like twisty pathways and there's like a lot of dead areas of the city if you know what i mean like because mm. there are a lot of freeways intersecting so there's obviously going to be the quieter areas of the city places that are a bit uglier yeah because like it, it it makes the parts that are bustling feel a little more real when the stuff there's areas that aren't like i had this one interaction which stuck out to me which i'm not sure if it was an accident but i hope it wasn't but like i was walking and i kind of drifted into a an area of the pavement where there was a cop nearby and he did not want me to be there and he very aggressively shouted like back up but next to me was a i'm not body shaming or anything like that a very large man was next to me and i don't know what happened but like he freaked out and just started running and i was like okay i'm just gonna follow this guy and i followed this guy for a while and he just kept running and it wasn't like he was just running in a straight line he was he looked like he was going somewhere and i was like i asked the developer i was like is this does this dude have a story and he was like i'm not sure um and i wanted to follow him because he looked terrified and he just he was like running he's i don't know how he had that much stamina but i was like <laughs> if this was if this was like my natural playthrough i think i would follow him for about 15 to 20 minutes just to see what would happen but i think something else that really stuck out stuck out to me was the brain dance mechanic did you guys try that I did not yeah. know. Yeah, so that's something I didn't really know about. I've been kind of limiting how much I see, but like at the risk of being reductive, it's the uh, detective mode investigation stuff from Batman Arkham Origins. Um, uh, 
I like to compare it to, did you guys play Tacoma? The follow-up to God? I did, that's yes. exactly what it reminded me of. So just having a scene play out in 3D space, but you are free to move around and look at the other nooks and crannies, not in the main scene. So the idea is people are effectively taking their memories and um, recreating them almost like in a video editing suite and then selling them on for various things. Most of the time it's used for, you know, adult entertainment, but you can do weird things with it. And you can also do things like put yourself into another person's memory and explore it. And you can do that via first person or you can detach and just watch it all play out. And then there's like wrinkles like um, using, just focusing on an audio layer in the actual environment and listening to key conversations. They show you how it works by uh, making you live through a failed um, hold up scene where one person is, where the perpetrator is killed and you figure out why that happened and how that happened. And it's just really cool. Yeah wrinkle that makes me that makes me excited about the potential for like future cop and like the, the, the example that they gave us is obviously very early and very linear and i kind of am curious to see whether the story changes based on what you do or don't pick up like if you mm. go into a brain dance and don't pick up a clue uh what happens then yeah it's impressive right it's too bad most of the bds we do here are only good for flogging the log in a lot of ways it does feel like an open world rpg that you know players will probably be very familiar with yeah and it's more more like in depth than the witcher was by design so like when i went into the actual like skill tree menu i was like wow this is a lot and they were and the developer that was on call was like yeah people kind of felt like there wasn't a lot of freedom to create their own kind of Geralt they have buckets of like you know cool and body and you know, tech and that kind of stuff. But within those, there's like multiple skill trees that have so many different small options to unlock, like passives and abilities and that kind of stuff. And for those that want it, I did double check and it seemed that the developer on our on my playthrough was like, you can do a no kill run of the game. So that's what I'll be doing. Well, anyway, those are our impressions of Cyberpunk 2077. We have a ton of Cyberpunk content planned and already up. So make sure to check all that stuff out on GameSpot. And if you have any questions for us, we will be doing a Q&A next week where we will answer your questions. So if you have anything for us, please leave them in the comments below, or you can find us on Twitter and we will try to get to all of those questions next time. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later.